Thank you. All righty. Share. Oh, wait. Not there. Go to the beginning. That would be better. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to see everyone here. Been here for a couple of the sessions, and everyone's been doing wonderful. Um, today, I'm going to be presenting on burnout. Uh, some of you may know me, uh, but for our outline, just real quick, I want to talk about what is burnout? How do we overcome burnout? Something called stress optimization and go into increasing resilience and then fixing stress damage. And for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Apprentice Coyote, or my professional name is Cody Dakota Wheaton. Um, I'm an indigenous Christian Jedi here at Tojo. I'm the apprentice to Master Xanthan Storm. Uh, in my professional work, I'm a legendary leadership coach, digital writer, and speaker. So a lot of what I'm talking about today comes from that. Um, I've written over 550 articles on leadership at this point. Uh, and in 2023, I had 20 nominations or awards for my work. And this year I'm at 35 so far, um, which has been absolutely bonkers crazy. Um, and then along with that, I'm certified in a bunch of different things. I'm not going to go into all of these. If you're interested in that, you can always reach out to me. Just so you know, there's a lot of things that I've trained in to get an understanding of what we're about to talk about. So the first question I have is, what is burnout? Is there anyone who has uh, ideas of what burnout is? Do you guys know what burnout is? I know what my burnout yeah. looks like. Yeah. I, just, I, I run out of patience. I run out of um, I run out of things that I try to try to try to cultivate. Uh, I, I run out of uh, care. I run out of, you know, I, I reach my limits, basically. My my burnout looks like I've reached, I've reached my limits, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. Makes perfect sense, too. Anyone else want to chime in? I'm going to give a countdown. Five. I'll chime in here. Uh, yeah. My burnout ends up being fatigue, both mental and physical. My brain just doesn't want to brain anymore. I can't think straight. And all I want to do is sleep. Yeah, absolutely. Also makes perfect sense. Thank you for sharing that, great dude. Anyone else? Yes, oh. I've developed a fear of doing certain things. So now I have to do them afraid. Yeah, definitely. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's like... A... I'm scared, yeah, do it scared. So I'm, a lot of things that I really don't want to do, I have to do them anyway, and I do them anyway, but if the fear is from the burnout. Yeah, yeah, in many ways, uh, burnout leaves an imprint of fear in us. Um, and there's a lot of reasons that happens. So thank you, Serenity, for sharing that. Um, I'm gonna keep going. So to talk about what is burnout, right? Um, from a physiological perspective, it's when our bodies are literally tearing itself apart. We have to use the energy in our lives. And when we stop having enough energy to do the things that we have to get done, the body will literally use parts and tear itself apart in order to provide enough energy to get things done. And it'll continue to do that until we just can't do it anymore. And that moment where we just can't take it anymore because our bodies have just torn themselves apart so much, that is what burnout is. Um, and during burnout, our productivity is reduced to at least 1 20th of its potential. Uh, it's where we have our worst areas of learning potential and decision-making, uh, our emotional intelligence, whether it's understanding our own emotions or other people's emotions, both aspects of that, dramatically decreases, um, and it's the opposite of flow, right? Flow states in psychology are where we do our absolute best work, where we feel our best, where things come together better. Um, and in many ways, I would say that from our perspective as Jedi, burnout is when we're most disconnected from the force uh, because of all of these aspects that go in. And so how common is burnout? Does anyone have any ideas of how common burnout is? 
out of curiosity. Want to take a guess? Maybe um, it takes up, I don't know, 20% of the workforce. 20% of workforce, okay. Any other guesses? Once a year. <laughs> Once a year. Once a year per person, yeah. <laughs> I think it depends upon the situation where you're at, what you're doing. Some people have a very easy job. Some people have a very high stress job. Definitely get what you're saying there. Anyone else? All right. Well, it may surprise you. Um, burnout does technically run on a scale, but right now burnout is impacting 80% of the workforce today on different levels within that scale. Um, but it's it's that high. Yes, exactly, right? Blows your mind how how widespread burnout is. Um, I, I still can't believe it sometimes. But you look at the workforce and you see the signs of it, you know, whether it's um, mass quittings or quiet quitting, as they put it, or um, insubordination, strikes. Um, you're seeing the consequences of this burnout to where people just can't take it anymore. Um, and as Jedi, that means we're going to be interacting with a lot of people who are in burnout, whether it's what we're struggling with ourselves in our lives, people we're interacting with, new members to the temple, people they're interacting with. Burnout is all around us. And so it's something that we have to be paying attention to. Um, so then the question becomes, how do we overcome burnout? Uh, and really, there's three major steps to overcoming burnout. You have stress optimization, which is something that helps you get to flow states. You have increasing resilience, which is all about handling stressors better. And then you have fixing stress damage, which is physiological healing, because stress does cause damage in the body, literally. Now, a quick question for you guys, is stress good or bad? It depends. Stress is actually, you know, from a biological standpoint, stress is, um, helps push you past certain points and also, you know, from helps evolution happen. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're exactly on target with that. Again. That's what I was going to say to Amy uh, to the punch, but <laughs> she's right. She is absolutely yeah. right. The answer is yes. In, in food. Yes. Go ahead. Probably. In food, I use stress to grow more food. Now, mm -hmm. you stress the plant you get more you get more food so it, it, it just depends on the on the type of stress exactly every one of you perfectly dead center on it um and really there's classified as two general types of stress you have what's called you stress and distress um and you comes from the greek word for good and so that is literally good stress so carlos what you're describing with plants there you're putting some good stress on them so that they can grow stronger, actually. Um, on the other side, you have dis, which is negative stress, right? Which is a Greek word uh, that is along the lines of hell, essentially. So you could actually say that distress is like hell stress, if you will. Um, and that's the type of stuff that tears us down and breaks us. Um, so this is going to bring us into the stress optimization diagram, right? So really stress exists on this spectrum, right? Um, and where you land on it is going to really depend on what happens to you when it comes to stress. Um, so going from either extreme, right? On one extreme, you have burnout, which is a lot of what we're talking about because that's where a lot of people are. But there's another extreme that's also technically bad, which is boredom. And then right above that, you have recovery on one side and distress on the other side. And straight down the middle, that's the use stress zone. And then at the very top of use stress um, is the flow zone, which according to the science is about 4% beyond your current capabilities in whatever you're doing. Um, now, in order to understand this better, it's also good to understand the flow cycle, right? That's where we perform our best. Flow cycle has four parts. You have recovery, which is absolutely necessary for flow to happen. Then you have struggle. You have to struggle to get into flow. If you don't struggle, you're not going to get into flow. Eventually, you're probably going to hit boredom. But you struggle just enough to get into that use stress zone. 
and you can release. And when you release, you start the flow zone. And then the flow zone can last anywhere from about 50 to 90 minutes, depending on the person's situation and outside factors that can happen. And then we have to go through a recovery phase to get back into flow. So if we look at it from the optimization standpoint here, you really want to be going from recovery into use stress and flow and back to recovery. And you want to kind of be going back and forth in there. And where people start to hit burnout is they go past that use stress zone into distress. And something that's very important for us to understand here is that all stress adds. It doesn't matter what type of stress you're talking about, um, it's all going to add together. So there's this thing that I've worked on over the past couple of years called the four brains theory. Um, you have your brain that's in your head, the nervous system, the heart, which there's a study of the neurons in the heart called neurocardiology. Um, and you have the gut, which there's a brain in the gut system called neurogastroenterology. Basically, I bring this up to say that you can receive stressors from all of these things, right? In the brain, if you're um, mentally focusing on something that's distressful, that's going to add. If there is something in your environment that sets off your nervous system, that's going to add to the stress. The heart, there's a lot of emotional aspects that go into that with the thinking of it. And if there's a lot of emotional challenges that you're having, that's going to add to it. And within the gut as well. Um, if you're eating certain types of foods, it may not work well. That's going to add to the total stress. Um, and there are different types of stress as well to think about. You have social stress that is a part of this. You have physical stress that's a part of this. You have existential stress, right? A large part of why many of us are here it's because we've had existential stress and we're looking for answers to something. And Tocho has caught something of our attention to try and help that existential stress. Um, that's how it was for me. You also have emotional stressors and mental stressors and environmental stressors. All of these things add together. Um, so you may be thinking about stress, you may be having emotional reaction to stress, Within your environment, you may be around a lot of toxins that are also causing stress. Um, every single one of these adds together. Um, and something that's interesting for us to think about is what's called stress chains. Sometimes certain stressors cause other stressors. So when we think about all of these stressors, what we can do if we were to put it on the wall, right, or a board or a notebook, wrote out all of our stressors that we're experiencing, we could begin to link stressors together. This stress causes this stress, which causes that stress, right? Uh, a, a classic example of this, right? Um, if someone believes that they're overweight, right? And they go, why am I overweight, right? You can say, okay, there's the physical aspect of weight, connect it to food and the types of foods we're eating, right, which is a whole big mess, um, especially if you know about like the American standard diet um, or the, yeah, it, it's a mess. I, I see people shaking their heads. Um, but then, but then people ask, why am I eating these types of foods, right? And that might relate to emotions, right? A lot of people have emotional eating. And so they experience an emotion, they're trying to cope with the emotion. So they eat a certain type of food, let's say ice cream, right? It becomes a lot of ice cream. I have my sister-in-law, she calls it ice cream emergencies. <laughs> um, and so she's like, I need the ice cream to handle the emotional stress, but it causes this stress chain. So, and something that's interesting, one last thing on stress chain. Sometimes we can solve stress chains by looking at where does the stress chain begin? If we can fix it from beginning of the stress chain, reduce that stressor, it can help all the other stressors. Now, the next part of this, right, the second part of um, overcoming burnout, what is resilience? Who knows what resilience is? Anyone want to go on that? The ability to mitigate uh, the stress factors. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. Anyone else? Okay, I'm going to 
keep going. Um, go ahead, Pat. Carlos, if you would like to. No, you go ahead, do it. Okay. Um, so resilience essentially is how well we can handle stressors. If we can handle them very well, we have high resiliency. And if we struggle to handle those stressors, we're going to have low resilience. I mean, that becomes important because when we look at, um, oh, I went too far here. Um, when we look at that chart, right? If our resilience is low, we're going to hit distress more often. And it's going to be harder to get into use stress because we just blow past it. And when our resilience is higher, we can find use stress much more easy, much easier. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, and so another way that people say this is they call it your stress threshold, right? It's that marking point where something goes from use stress to distress. So if we look at it here, it's going to be that dotted line right there between you stress and distress. That mark is your stress threshold. And whether something puts you over that or under that is going to determine your resiliency around that. Now, how do we go about increasing our resilience? Resilience grows, happens through you stress or stress adaptation, right? And so we want to get as close to that line as possible without going past that line, which is part of the what reason why you need to look at stress optimization. Because if you're already in distress, you have to lower the stressors before you can start to build the resiliency. And so we're looking here, right? If you're in burnout already, first thing you have to do is get down into recovery so that you can get to the use stress build up resilience, go back between that use stress and recovery to push it further and further. Now, one other thing about this is that your resilience level is going to differ by your stressors, right? So we talked about different stressors before here, and I just have them listed out for you. Um, people handle their stressors differently. Some people are really great at certain types of stressors and awful at other types of stressors, right? And so someone could be incredibly fit, eating great food all the time. Their physical stressors are very low, but maybe their existential ones are horrible, right? And they're always struggling with this idea of, do I fit in and am I a part of something bigger? Um, and so when they experience that, it could set off, it could go right past that you stress into distress. Um, and, and it works the other way too. Sometimes, um, people are really great at those things, and it's a different one that uh, sets them up. And so when you're looking at different people, you have to look at, you know, which types of stressors, and when you're looking at yourself, which types of stressors am I great at, and which ones should I maybe start to work on and improve? And then the last part is, what is stress damage? Um, and so stress damage the technical term for this is called oxidative stress. And that is basically what happens in the body when we experience stress. Something happens, there is a stressor that creates some chain reactions in the body. And through those reactions, oxidative stress is left behind. Now, why that's important for us to understand is that stress damage, oxidative stress itself is also a stressor, right? So if we think about that chart again, that oxidative stress will build up and build up in the body. And just like all other stressors, it adds, right? And so if we never fix the oxidative stress, it just keeps becoming like a, uh, a junkyard in our bodies, right? And that is going to lower our resilience. It's going to make us handle other stressors less well because it just keeps piling up. Um, and there's a lot of programs out there that are very well intentioned, um, but fail to help people in the long run because they don't do anything about the stress damage. That stress damage remains and they might lower other stressors but that stress damage continues to build up and soon enough people find themselves right back in burnout because that underlying piece is still there. So how do we go about fixing stress damage? 
first thing is it's a couple of ingredients that we have to look at, right? First piece is you have to look at getting into that recovery zone. If you can't get into the recovery zone, you're not going to be able to remove stress damage, right? It's in that zone where stress damage is healed. So if you're not getting to recovery, you're going to struggle with built up oxidative stress over time. Uh, then there is this thing called ceruloplasmin that you need. And you're probably thinking, what is ceruloplasmin? It's a great question. And essentially it's what's called a master antioxidizer, right? Essentially it is the best cleanup crew that the body has in order to overcome stress oxidation or stress damage, it will um, most efficiently and effectively clean up that damage. And now you're asking, well, what does that, like, what is ceruloplasma and how do I build that, right? Uh, there's a, a few things that go into ceruloplasma that are important. The first is a micronutrient called copper. Copper, generally the easiest way for people to get copper is from whole food vitamin C. You do have to be careful with vitamin C. This is like a little asterisk here because a lot of pills and supplements try to um, make uh, things like ascorbic acid. Uh, they try to say that is vitamin C and that is not the same as whole food vitamin C. Um, things that have whole food vitamin C would be like oranges is a classic example. Um, and so just the way that ascorbic acid and vitamin C works in the body uh, are, is not the same. So what you're looking for here is really whole food vitamin C. You also need to look at your electrolytes, right? Electrolytes are what allow reactions to happen in the body more easily. So these are some other micronutrients here. Um, you have magnesium and calcium, which work together um, for a lot of people. They get plenty of calcium in their diet where they don't get enough is magnesium. And you need magnesium for energy. Um, and then the other side of this is sodium and potassium. Um, and a lot of people struggle with sodium and potassium in their lives because for a lot of people, they get a lot of sodium and not enough potassium. They need to work together. When you have too much sodium, it causes a lot of issues, which is why a lot of doctors help people stop taking sodium. It's not because sodium itself is necessarily bad, but the ratios are so out of sync between sodium and potassium that it's creating larger problems in the body. Um, you, you could think of it as balance, right? Within the force, you need a balance between sodium and potassium. You need a balance between magnesium and calcium. Um, then when it comes to ceruloplasmin, you need energy. Right? And the technical term for this in the body is magnesium ATP. This is literally what the body uses uh, to do everything, basically. Um, in order for the body to function, you need enough energy. If you don't have enough energy, your body is going to basically tear itself apart and get into burnout. Um, and so you have to make sure you're getting enough energy, which is going to partially come from that magnesium. It's also going to come from the types of foods you uh, so in nutrition, they call it uh, macronutrients, right? So you have carbs, fats, and proteins. And each of these play slightly different roles in the body, but all are incredibly important. And then the, the last thing that you have here is proper iron levels. Um, and there's a challenge in our world today where there's a lot of people who have anemia of iron overload. Um, and so basically their bodies have too much iron. And when we talk about stress oxidation, right, that chain reaction happens with iron. But when we have too much iron in our bodies, too many of those reactions are going to happen at once, which increases that uh, stress oxidation. It causes a whole bunch of issues. And those are the primary ceruloplasmin ingredients. This specifically is a very, very deep topic. And there are tests and things that you can do to understand where these are in your body currently. Um, I don't have enough time 
to go through all of that. But if that is something you're ever interested in learning more about, you can always reach out to me through the temple, through anything that I have available. You're always welcome to reach out to me, uh, which is going to leave me at the end here with questions. If there are any questions, anything uh, that people want to talk about. If you guys want me to go back to something so I can show you again, I'm more than happy to. I will do a stop screen share there. Um, ice cream emergencies, yeah. <laughs> I'm reading that, Pastor Carlos, in the, in the chat there. But yeah. Um, have any sorts of questions, thoughts, ideas, concerns, I'm here for you guys. I got a question. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about meditation as a way to relieve stress and burnout? And uh, if so, what types of meditation do you think works best for this type of um, scenario? Totally. So, so meditation, from my perspective and what I've done in my research here, um, is extremely beneficial from the perspective of stress optimization, right? And that's really where it shines. Um, a lot of times people utilize different types of meditation to help them look at the stressors that they're experiencing, especially things like existential stressors and mental stressors and emotional stressors, and to better understand those better wrap their minds around them and to better uh, come to a healthy understanding of those different stressors. And when that happens, it's going to reduce that overall stressors, right? And from the all stress adds perspective, that creates a lot of help, right? And if you do it enough, it can help re uh, reduce it below that threshold, right? Um, in terms of what type of meditation is best. Um, I'm of the opinion, and there will be people who agree with me, and that's fine. I totally understand that. Uh, but I'm of the opinion that there's no singular best way to do meditation. Uh, I would say find the type of meditation that works best for you based on how you are working with your different stressors. Right? Like for me personally, I struggle with just sitting there and just like, I'm here, that's it, right? My brain tends to process things at a thousand miles an hour and um, it doesn't wanna stop very well. Uh, so I, I've struggled with just the sitting there types of meditations. But for me, written meditation has been extremely beneficial, literally just writing out or typing out what is going through my head, processing it on paper or on computer. Uh, and, and that helps me reduce my stressors. So that is really beneficial for me. Um, but not everyone is like that, and that's okay, right? Um, one of the things that I think is really interesting about being a Jedi is we're not prescriptive in general. It's not, here's the solution to all of your problems, um, because people are very varied in how they react to the world. And so finding that thing that works for you, I think helps people a lot more than trying to say, this is the one thing you need to do and that's it. Um, now, I will also say that the place where I believe that meditation tends to be weak is in fixing stress damage, right? That ceruloplasmin piece specifically, there's nothing that meditation directly does that's going to improve ceruloplasmin uh, in the body. Um, it, it does help reduce overall stressors, but you need that stress damage to get fixed as well, right? Because if it doesn't get fixed, over time it's going to build up, right? And once it gets to a certain point, you're just going to be experiencing the same problem again. Um, unless you're one of the few types of individuals who can keep your stressors low throughout most of your life, which is very rare in today's world. Um, if you're one of those people, teach me everything you know, uh, because uh, most people don't have that luxury of being able to keep their stressors that low. 
Uh, and so ceruloplasmin becomes essential for that piece. Um, but the more you go into distress, the more stress oxidation you're going to have. And until you fix that oxidation, you're, you're eventually you're going to be hitting distress more frequently and it becomes a, a chain cycle basically. So Radhun, that was an amazing question. And that was an amazing answer. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. If I can add also to the meditation question, um, I have found that, uh, like you mentioned, that, you know, that sit and still meditation might not necessarily be your cup of tea. Um, there are multiple types. There is Tai Chi. There is yin yoga, which I have found yin yoga to be extremely beneficial. And I've also, um, talking to a therapist, is in a way meditative. Um, that doesn't work for everyone. Either they don't have, they have the ability to get to a therapist or they don't have a yin yoga place nearby. Um but journaling, journaling is also a way to just organize, to put down and organize your mind. And I have found that to be extremely helpful as well. No, like you were saying, not one solution fits everybody. And I'm one of those people who not one thing is enough. I have to do multiple things and approach it from different angles because journaling gets a different type of stressor out while yin yoga gets another one out. Exactly. Absolutely. And that's, that's a perfect example right there, right? Because um, one type is more going to be towards like a, either a mental or emotional or um, existential stressor, while yin yoga is going to be more correlated with like a physical stressor. Um, a lot of people also utilize it for emotional and mental stressors as well, but there's a lot of physical help that you're going to have. So that, that was a perfect example, absolutely. Any other questions, thoughts, ideas? I am at your service. Carlos is like, nope, I'm all good. Burnout is never going to be a problem for me ever again. <laughs> Well, if there aren't any questions or anything else in there, I'm happy to pass it back over to tonight, Tavi. Uh, yeah, but I'm still here, more than happy to answer questions, whether it's here, uh, through Discord, uh, email, through any of anywhere else I post stuff, social media, I'm always here uh, to help, to give ideas, to give thoughts. So whenever you guys need, I'm here for you. Thank you.